Hi folks, this is one of the ultrasonic transducers out of my um, root misting chamber thing. Um, I did buy two of them a while back and one of them stopped working after a couple of months and unfortunately the second one has stopped working as well which leaves me without anything to uh, keep the roots moist. Um, but I've got more on order but I thought I'd take a look and actually see if I can work out what's going on inside these things. and uh, see if they're pulling any current. Um, I've actually done this already so I know that they are. But, uh, we turn it on, giving it 24 volts, you can see it's pulling 13 milliamps there. Oh, there we go. If I drop it in a cup of water, you see it intermittently now switches between 40, 40 milliamps and 13. So there's something going in there that can clearly still detect whether it's in water or not. Of course you can't see that, can you? Um, so there we go. So when I drop it in water, you can see it starts to flick the current between 13 and 40 milliamps. But when it's not in the water, it just sits at 13 milliamps. And the other one of them, that I think stopped working a longer time ago, does exactly the same thing, 39 milliamps and 9 milliamps. So they're not totally dead, but they're not um, making any fog. So I'm guessing the electronics still works but the transducers stopped or something along those lines. Um, I thought I'd take one apart and um, well, see if I can take one apart. I imagine these things are filled with potting compound and it's going to be near impossible to get in there. But um, I'll see what I can do, see if I can get inside it and uh, have a look at what circuitry they've got inside these things. So yeah, as I thought would be the case, this thing's uh, totally filled with potting compound on the inside. Uh, no way to easily get inside that and see what it's made of. All right. Well, you don't need to watch all of this. I'll show you when there's something interesting. So with the help of my cutting tool, chisel and hammer, I've managed to remove all the potting compound from this, which gets us uh, a better look at the ultrasonic sensor inside it. Ah, which is a piezo transducer. Not AW1401. That's very interesting. Now presumably the rest of the electronics inside there must sort of work because um, it was pulling 40 milliamps from time to time. I'm going to take this to bits a bit more and see what else I can find. I made the mistake of not bringing the tripod down with me, but underneath that piezo transducer thing we've got the system for mounting it, which is that spring pressing on the bottom contact, and then this metal ring on the top is actually attached at the back there, down to the circuit, I believe, so that's the two points of contact on that which does all the movement. I'm going to pull this um, o-ring out and then see what else I can find inside. quite well made. Um, you're not going to damage it by dropping it. Wow, it sounds like Darth Vader. Well, that's got us into some of the circuitry there, you can just see bits in the end. I've got a pretty printed circuit board there, which you can see I've taken slices off, and uh, that's some component. Well, that was once some component because I think I've broken the lead on that. Just 
show you because I found it. We've got a number printed on the circuit board there. WHT35A2014030. Something. I was wondering if they were going to have a silk screen on there to show us the components, which they might do yet, because there doesn't look to be a huge amount on this board. We might get it out mostly intact. Then, just found we've got an aluminium heatsink in there. So uh, I can get into that fairly easily, I expect. taken the top off a little inductor by accident. That's um, a little roll of copper wire that was once an inductor there. And still is. You can probably get save most of that. Go. So in addition to the heat sink, which almost certainly sits on top of a big transistor, and this is obviously some kind of switching power supply arrangement going on here, we've got a uh, our inductor coil and we've got a big, fairly low ohm resistor there. Uh, 430 ohm by the looks of it. top of an electrolytic capacitor there. Well, I'm bored with this now. I think I've done all I'm going to do from there. Um, no user serviceable parts inside. Um, but I am going to look at that circuit board number and that piezo transducer. So I looked at this model number on the circuit board, this WHT35A, and um, I've actually found out some specs on this thing finally. It's made by a company called Jakir, um, very strange name, and um, it's a 10 watt unit doing 90 milliliters per hour, apparently. It's sorry, 80 milliliters per hour is its misting rate. Oh, there that says 300 milliliters per hour. Hmm numbers all over the place. Power 15 watt. Um, anyway, it's certainly one of these Jakir units. Well, thankfully, since these two died, this one's just arrived in the post. Um, I ordered this after they died. Actually, I've ordered from three different places to see who'd get here first. Um, I thought I'd take a quick look inside here. This one's got a metal body instead, and it came with a power supply. This was 20 quid from Maplin Electronics, which is a high street shop, much like Radio Shack was in the States until it just died. Um, but we've still got Maplin here, so this came from them. Um, they've chucked in a power brick, which is why it's so heavy. Uh, they say this one uses 36 watts of power, which I think is more than the other ones. But it's basically much the same. Disc looks a bit nicer, and the disc on this one is actually replaceable, whereas these ones, it's just impossible to unscrew the thing. I did try. But I know the disc on this is supposed to be replaceable. So I'm going to chuck that in the um, routing chamber. Get that back working again. Actually, before I put it in the sting chamber, let's give it a test and see how it performs. When I've got the um, other ones that are on order, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison and we'll find out which one's the best, because looking through listings on eBay, it's nigh on impossible to work out the physical dimensions of these things or how much fog they're going to make. Some of them list their millilitres per hour production rate. Um, most of them don't, so you've just got no idea what you're getting. This is made by Asia Mist, apparently. So. Oh, yeah. Got an LED that comes on. And let's see what happens when it gets in some water. Well, that seems quite effective. And it's making a mess on my desk, so we'll stop with that. That'll do. I'll get that in the misting chamber. And um, oh, I'm going to have to make a new polystyrene float for it because I don't know the depth that needs. Um, Alright, back in a minute. 
quick look at the seedlings, they're all doing very well still even though the fog has stopped working and I've got a good load of roots there. And um, now I notice this one says it needs a water depth of 45 to 65 millilitres, millimetres, and I think I'm pretty much bang on with that. Now I'm going to plug this in now, sorry this is all one hand, and there we go, she's away and looking good there for the mist production. So excellent, we're back in business. Actually I think that's definitely better than the uh, cheapest possible ones that I got from China before. It seems to be putting out a good amount of mist there. Right. There we go, happy plants once again. Well, I've tried really, really hard to unscrew this top plate to get at this um, atomizer disc underneath it, and no matter what I try, it just doesn't budge. I figure they've glued it in there, they really don't want these to be replaceable. So, um, the only way to get that disc out would be uh, as destructive as the last way, and then this thing would be destroyed. So, this is dead, and um, I thought I'd see what happens with a bit more voltage. So um, what I've got going on here, mains power comes in, goes through a 100 watt light bulb, into an isolation transformer to make it so we're not actually attached to the mains anymore. Then we're going into a variable transformer or a variac, which lets me dial anywhere from zero up to uh, 250 volts or so. And then we're coming out of there totally unsafe, do not try this at home, into a flimsy set of wires and a 2.mm jack plug which will feed into our ultrasonic fogger which I'm going to drop in this jar full of water and um, we'll see what happens with a bit more voltage okay um, you see we've already lit up our bulb dimly and we're putting out 1.8 volts AC there so I'm going to ramp that up now Four volts. There we go. There we are. It's 24 volts AC. That's what the uh, fog is supposed to run on, and clearly still not working. We'll start to increase our power a bit. Still no signs of action at 50 volts. I think things will start going wrong. Oh, right, something's gone wrong inside because we just got noticeably brighter. Coming 70 volts. Oh, we just got a little pop out of that. I think we're actually be getting um, some little pulses out of our disc now. Well, and I think we've just got a short circuit because we've just dropped to 5 volts there. No, that's all it's going to do. How disappointing. No, well, not very exciting. Alright, turn that off. Oh well, that was it. Nothing to see, another dead one. Ah oh well, cheers folks, see you next time.